so in today's lecture we will learn about arrays in C so what is array so let's take one simple example so let's say we are given to some n numbers okay so we are given let's say to some three numbers so this problem is something so sum up three numbers so this is fine we can write int x y and z and now i can say that x is equal to 3 y is equal to 4 and z is equal to 5 then i can say that int sum is equal to x plus y plus z so this is simple and it solves our purpose but let's say that the question now changes and it becomes sum 100 numbers so now this is not so trivial so we don't have even so much variables like we cannot write now that okay x either we can write x y z a b c so we will have 26 such variables but then again and we can make different combinations we can write like num 1 num 2 but that also doesn't help so we have to write such a long piece of code so what here what helps us and again even if we have say we write like this till num 100 so if i have to write now the summation so you can see how big it will become so my sum now will be int s is equal to num 1 plus num 2 plus num 3 up to num 100 so this is too cumbersome to type so here comes what's called array so in this what happens is now i can define int num 100 so now what happens is it becomes now very easy so this is array and what it means now i have variables num 0 num 1 num 2 till num 99 so so we have from 0 to 99 and that means we have now 100 variables and all are of type int so this is the way we define this is int so we define data type then this is the variable name and this represents the number of different objects that we want so now let's look so what my problem is to sum up 100 numbers so i simply say int num 100 and so now i have 100 numbers and i can take user input or even i can say that okay for and i can define int i is equal to 0 and i is equal to 0 i is less than 100 i plus plus and then we say that num of i is equal to i so this means now what happens is that we have so num 0 will be 0 num of 1 will be 1 num 2 will be 2 and this will go num of 98 will be 98 and num of 99 will be 99 so this is the way so we have this is called the index that is in the square bracket so this one is 
index and so we have different num0 num1 num2 till num99 and now i can just simply sum so i can define int s is equal to 0 and then so this is accessing the element so i can access num5 so this is in the square bracket i have to write the index and so what we will do is for again i will say for i is equal to 0 i is less than 100 i plus plus sum is equal to sum plus num of i so this way in this variable it will have the sum of all 100 numbers so this is how we define an array so now let's look at a few more things if i want to initialize an array so let's say we had int num and 5 so i can write now here initialize it as 1 7 3 10 and 15 so this what it means here is now that num of 0 so when i define num 5 it means I will have index from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you write num5, it means it will have 5 elements, but it will start from 0 and it will end at 4. So this way what happens is now num0 is 1, num of 2 is 3, and num of 4 is 15 so this way we see that we can initialize arrays so this is initialization of arrays and now what we see is let's look at some other types of arrays so if we want to define let's say a float so what will happen we will write data type float then we can write f num and let's say we want to have an array of floats of size 10 so this means now memory will be allocated so let's see the memory consideration so what happens here is that now 10 memory locations will be allocated for all these numbers so this is the first one so f num 0 this is f num 1 and this is f num 2 so this is 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 so it starts from 0 and similarly let's say we want to define a char array so we will write char and then so c array and let's say we want to store a name so we will write char array and maximum name size let's say it's 20 so we will do like this and so this becomes now 20 characters will memory for 20 characters will be allocated and now let's say we want to store a name which is john so what will happen now we will write c a r r 0 is equal to j c a r r 1 is equal to o c a r r 2 is equal to h and c a r r 3 is equal to n so this way we have allocated the first four characters to the first four indices of the 
P A R R array. So this way we saw what is array, how to write arrays for integers, floats and char. So this ends our lecture here and to see all the lectures you can go to sorofschool.org. So thanks for watching.